What the heck is this? All right, so I um, am still reading in my book, this book right here, the uh, Complete Casting Handbook, Metal Casting Processes, Metallurgy Techniques and Design, second edition by John Campbell. This is the book I'm going out of. Um, last time I talked to you about this stuff, I was in chapter three. Well, guess what? I'm in chapter three. <laughs> Still, weeks later, weeks later, I ran across this picture here. This, if you're, uh, if you have the book or you're thinking about getting the book, this is Figure 3.2 uh, in Chapter 3, page 97 of the book. Right there, you go, see it. And I saw this thing here, this little swirly thing. So I thought I'd better make some. And these guys are typical things for testing fluidity, um, categorizing their fluidity, um, measuring fluidity, that kind of stuff. Fluidity is not defined in casting terms. It's not the term defined as the, uh, the inverse of viscosity. In other words, it's not how runny things are. Fluidity is defined as how far it will flow. So, one of the things that uh, they do is they take these little curled up things and put them in the flask and, and start pouring at one end and just see how far it'll go. And the cool thing about this is this, if you unwrap this thing, if you could unwrap this thing, it's about 50, this is probably about 50 millimeters long is about what I've, mine has measured out, which is pretty neat because I, it means I can get 50 millimeters of test flow in my flask, it's only 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters or 20, about 25 millimeters wide. So, uh, pretty cool little design. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually run two tests simultaneously, and we're going to pour metal in both these guys, kind of like right between them, and then have them both fill up and go around. One I'm going to vent, one I'm not going to vent. Now, this is in... Um, this is really in light of a video I watched the other day from Lucky Gen 1001. His setup, when he does a very similar test, shows pretty conclusively that with his environment, his setup, he does not need venting for this thing. Venting doesn't help him on a test just like this, or very similar to this. And I'm going to go ahead and link his video at the end uh, of mine, uh, just so you can see it by comparison. Now. Here's the difference. My sand is very different than his sand, I believe. Uh, he's, using, he's using green sand, so it's going to be you know, water-based uh, as a binder. Uh, I don't know how coarse his sand is. It may be coarser, it may be finer than mine. I, I don't know. I'm told that the finer the sand, the less fluidity you'll have, the less distance metal will flow. Um, I don't know if that's because there's just more surface contact and more opportunity for it to cool. Um, but I'm told that coarser sand will allow a, fur, a, a longer flow. The other thing is water versus oil. My sand is oil-based. In fact, my sand is probably not even considered petrobond at this point because most of the bonding agent that may have come in petrobond, and I don't know what it is, has probably burned, long since burned out. Um, I use a, uh, a recycled version of my sand. I, I typically redo it, and you can see it's very dark in color. This is used to be Petrobond, which is typically, you know, very orange in color. And basically what I do is I take my burned out sand, I add some 10W30 non-detergent motor oil to it, and I just kind of blend it all together again, stir it up, mix it up real good, and I dump it back in my container, and I use that to fill my flask with. So, I don't know how porous that stuff is. I don't know how it even compares to Petrobond. I'm still not going to know. <laughs> Because I'm not going to fill this thing full of Petrobond. I can't, I don't think I have enough, first of all. But um, I'm just not going to waste that much Petrobond to, to, to do this test. So I'm going to set this guy up. We're going to try to pour a little bit differently. We're going to pour, I'm going to put my pattern in the cope. So it's going to be up above. So we're going to pour down. I'm going to put runners in the drag. And they're going to feed up 
into the part, and then they're going to flow around inside the part in the cope. So uh, I think what I'm going to do, which is probably ridiculous, but I'm going to do it anyway, I'm going to ram up my cope first. I think. I'm going to ram my cope first, and then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put my drag on it, ram that up, and then I'm going to flip it over again, and we're going to pour, I think. I may change my mind. Let's get at it. We're going to put our pattern in here. Try to get them as same as I can. I am going to put my put my sprue over here, and then we're going to put a a vent off the end of one of these guys. So that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna ram up. Uh, let's see if we can't get this going here. Okay, it's all rammed up, cut up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm really just going to set it as... No, I'm not. I'm going to turn it over. That's what I'm going to do. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this this way is I was having a lot of trouble getting my pattern out. It was just uh, breaking too much. So I wanted to just be able to scrape it down while it's in the cope, break that edge that's going to get hung up, and then what we'll do is we'll just let the uh, drag fill that back in. Alright, we'll go ahead and ram up the, uh, the drag now. Yes, I know my vent and my sprue are going to fill. I know that. But not a lot.
or halfway. Okay, I need to open this up again. I need to blow out my sprue and my vent, make sure they're good and clean, make sure there's not any loose sand laying around. And uh, <laughs> I gotta get those patterns out of there. Okay, so far so good. It would appear that my sprue is right there. So I'm just going to cut this guy plenty wide down at this end. I'm not doing a big base in, we're just making it big enough that I can make sure I hit it. And I have plenty of volume in there. And I'm done. Then I'm going to cut across these guys basically like so we're so going to try to get as even a gating system as I can get in here okay that's going to be it what else is going to flow in here is going to come across it's going to fill up and then it's going to come into these guys and spiral out with the vent being on this one. Let's see if we can't pick this up. Yeah, it's not awesome, but it ain't terrible. Okay, we're going to blow this out. It's going to look horrible, but it's going to work. All right, we're poured. I thought about doing something fun with this. Um, why don't you pause right now? Just pause and then put your comments in a comment. Tell me what you think happened. Did it pour fuller on the vented side or on the non-vented side? Or what, what do you think happened? Before we see the results, go ahead and do that. I'm going to tell you my thoughts. I think the vented side ran further. I'll tell you right, right now. Um, clearly, we don't know. But we'll let this cool. We'll open it all up. We'll see together. Um, I would love to see what you guys think. Let's go ahead and open her up and see what we got. Ready? Our, well, here's what we got. <laughs> There's the vent right there. So we went all the way around on the vented side, but we went a long way on the non-vented side. Long way. That says my sand must be reasonably porous. Um, so, let me pull it out of here. We'll take a look at her.
So that was fun. I had no idea what I just shot because <laughs> I didn't shoot anything. My camera was turned off. Anyway, let's go back. I'll do the whole thing. I'll do the whole spiel again anyway. Here we go. We got my pouring basin. Pretty good size basin. You can see how deep it is. You can see how deep the ridge is as well. Metal will come in. Turbulence will come. It'll be turbulent in here as it comes in. Although I try to keep a pretty laminar flow. You can see how I, it flew. It flew. It flowed out of the uh, crucible. Anyway, that metal will come up. It will f come over the ridge uh, and start filling the sprue. I try to keep the metal up above, way, well above the ridge so that I never have air coming, getting sucked down through here and getting entrained, entrained in the metal. Uh, pretty decent sized runner system. My sprue came off to the side. You can see that it uh, wasn't right in the middle, but I, that's okay because if you look at how this thing filled, you can see that it came in here and it came across at the same time. And once those, those, the whole area fills, it rises up and it starts filling the, the actual pattern right through here. So by the time it gets to the pattern, I think they're both getting equal amounts of metal without question in my mind. I, don't, I, can't, I can't imagine that one side was getting more than another based on the fact that my sprue was off to the side of my runner a little bit. Um, clearly, a vent helped. Now, I've had times in the past when um, I have failed getting parts to fill and I put in vents, even if they're just tiny, like this little quarter inch vent, uh, and then I get success. So it would appear that with my sand, uh, my oil-based, whatever that is, a vent helps. Now, I'm telling you that because if you go watch Lucky Gen 1001, I'm going to abbreviate you to Lucky Gen, man. Sorry. If you go watch his, he is test pretty conclusively showed with his setup, he doesn't need vents, at least on a test like this, okay? So, there you go. I am going to do this. I'm gonna do a couple things here. These guys here, if you're interested in this, if you've got a 3D printer or access to a 3D printer, I'm gonna go ahead and link um, these parts, the, uh, the STL files to these parts, down um, below in the description, they're on a site that you can just download them uh, on a Google Drive. Uh, I'll make them freely available. You can just use them, do as you want. I'd love to see what happened uh, with yours. If you if you have uh, the time and inclination to do this setup and do the same test, I'd love to find out. Um, anyway, so let's wrap this thing up. Let's see, I'll stand over here. All right, I'm going to link right up here. I'm going to link Lucky Gen's vid Lucky Gen 1001, uh, his video right there. It's a pretty good test. You need to go watch it and see what he did, see his results, because they're different than mine. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the subscribe button down there. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. And if you're already subscribed and you're not getting notified, click that darn bell. Get the notification turned on so you can find out that I released a video every stinking Friday. <laughs> you guys have a great day.